Mark 11, 1 through 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage in Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And when they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut off from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive podcast. We're so glad you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what it says and talk about it here today. Well, it's uh, a happy day because we got Pastor Mike McKay back after a long hiatus. It's good to be back. Yeah, yeah, you're mad. You, three weeks? I know. <laughs> Where were you? Hopefully you missed me. That's what we did. We did. We missed you here at the podcast. Hopefully those of you listening in our audience uh, miss Pastor Mike, but we had some great guests. Bob Rune was here. Um, we had some others, which was really cool. But also we, the Three Musketeers, our regular team, were also joined with Justin McElderly. Good to be here. You were with yeah, us. Yeah, it's, it's been a little while, I feel like. Yeah. But, or at least not consistent. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Kind of back and forth, yeah. I think. Yeah, because Mike had had a steady departure, or, you know, he was out for a few uh, weeks not preaching, and then you were out. You were I was out of town once, yeah. and I think another time we just had you scheduled to preach. And yeah. My grandmother asked my mom if I work anymore, so I was like, because <laughs> she watches me online from yes. from the, from Washington, so I'm like, yes, I assure yeah, you. I guess I, I do more than that. Sundays, yeah. So yeah, I, People are probably calling I, in, where's yeah, McKay yeah, and yeah, the elderly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the double M's? Or not here. Yeah. Well, we're, this podcast is accomplishing many purposes. One is to tell you that, yes, Mike and Justin are still here and it's going to be <laughs> great. Actually, we have uh, the second thing that we're talking about is we're in uh, the Passion Week officially mm-hmm. now. We uh, preached on Palm Sunday last Sunday. We're going to unpack that in a moment. And we're also looking ahead to not only Easter Sunday, but for those listening, we have a ton of events coming up. We got Monday, Thursday, and then Good Friday is coming up too. So just a, a lot of stuff is happening. Um, this week now for us to partake in, but also what does that stuff really mean, right? It's Mm -hmm. the highs and lows, the food, the no food, right? So we want to talk about everything. So uh, as you listeners, you heard, uh, we read through uh, the passage from Mark 11, 1 through 11, the triumphal entry. So I just want to start there, you guys. What what is the triumphal entry for uh, number one? But then is it it a random one-time event? I mean, we think of donkeys, that's kind of like a very lowly, kind of almost awkward animal, (laughs) like in modern times, but apparently, Justin, you were talking about that as a lot of significance, and Mike, you were saying that too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the triumphal entry is in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You just read the uh, one in in Mark, in in Matthew, and in John. uh, As they're recording this event, they uh, express some prophecies that have been told Way back when, yeah. uh, uh, specifically from Zechariah nine nine, hmm. where it says that uh, uh, you know, say to the daughters of Zion, behold, your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Um, <clears throat> so that's taken from Zechariah nine nine, and and Zechariah is a very strange Bible book. Hmm. Uh, Justin and I were talking about this. It's just, it's just bizarre. <laughs> it's kind of a compilation of. Uh, sayings and dreams and put together uh, the main theme of that is speaking of Messiah Jesus or yeah. we know it to be Jesus yeah. but speaking of Messiah coming because uh, <clears throat> Zechariah's prophecies were taken towards the end of the um, exile of Israel Israel had not followed God's will and way and so God said you're going to go into exile they were taken by the Babylonian kingdom in captivity, they were um, 
looked at as lowly people. They were shunned, you know, kicked in the, as, as people walked down the streets. Mm. Some even spit upon, yeah. persecuted in huge ways. Um, and of course, yeah, the time, and, and, yeah. and a lot of their cities were burned. Yeah, yeah. And so now they're coming back. Mm. Uh, I think on Sunday I mentioned that it's it may be like it hasn't happened yet, but when this U- Ukrainian war is over, uh, the war in Ukraine is yeah. over, it'll be much like as Ukraine comes back and they're yeah. seeing burnout buildings Devastated. and mourning the loss of their friends and family and yeah. trying to rebuild life, that's how Israel felt mm. in mm. this. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I uh, yeah, that's the hope and kind of the, as you walk through verses one through eight, you just get this list of names that some are familiar, some aren't, but... Um, in Zechariah. It, in Zechariah, yeah. yeah. And, and really what you see in that is um, a, a God's journey from north to south in terms of vindicating Israel, you know, that he's going to walk through these places and he's going to set things right. Um, and... You know, to that end, when you hear, when you think of times of despair, when we talk about Ukraine, and and even as we, you know, it doesn't exactly fit. It feels like we're trivializing something to make it fit something as big as this devastation, but it's still what our our current experience of yeah, yeah. of feeling whatever desolation we feel that that God is rolling through to fix that, and and then ultimately, it's. You know all the things God is going to do in verses one to eight, and then it switches to a king. That yeah. there's going to be a king through whom He works, yeah. um, and certainly they're thinking David. And one of the things that I I discovered, I mean, I read Zechariah every year because I read through my Bible every year, but I don't study Zechariah every year. So it was very illuminating for me. And in that, this is the first time we hear about a donkey, right? That way back in Genesis 49, when God is, or when Jacob is blessing his sons and, and really giving an identity to the tribes of Israel, yeah. there's the idea that the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. And so that's a messianic prophecy that I've always known about. But then it keeps going and it talks about he'll tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. So it doesn't talk about riding it, but there you go. You've got the ruling, yeah. the ruling tribe. There's an association. With, with an association yeah. with a donkey, and you just see God connecting dots all the way back from the beginning, and and uh, it's it's really fascinating. And, and even culturally, it, it you know for for hundreds of years at that time, the palm fronds, you know, that's that's symbols for a lot of ancient Near Eastern cultures of like, okay, there's there's royalty laying these things down, mm-hmm. um, uh, adornment and the, and procession yeah. as as a king or a ruler or a victorious king would roll into a city, right. Um, yeah, yeah, but that's that's fascinating that this yeah. is something that's reaching back far into uh, into Jewish history. Well, and you see a little bit too of how God kind of inverts things, right? How He does things upside down. Like hmm. when you think of a king returning, mm-hmm. if we take Jesus out of it, we think of him on his you know massive white charger with blood splattered from yeah. conquering the yeah. foes, you know. And here he is; he's on a donkey, you yeah. know. And, yeah, and, yeah. and 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 that's some of it. Uh, one of the things that I was reading was that that some of that is. Um, Israel's response to not trusting in horses and chariots. And so mm. that was why that mm. was a a tradition or an expectation of oh, interesting. the king is a humble servant, not the not a smashing war warrior. Yeah. 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 So and that, that wasn't just a thing of Jesus. You know, that was not yeah. like just, oh, Jesus brought in that idea. Yeah. It's been from the very beginning. Yeah. And that's the you know, our human thinking, we think, you know, uh, this grandiose entrance, you know, and I, I likened it to because I have, you know, eight grandchildren. I think yeah. of, you know, I was thinking of, you know, Prince Ali, yeah, you know, Aladdin. And he, yeah. Yeah, Aladdin coming into, you know, where this pomp and circumstances <laughs> yeah. coming into the because you want him to come yeah. in like that. You want him to totally. come into yeah. this this warrior, you know, like yeah, Justin, yeah. And, yeah. and really, you know, blaze trail, pull out that sword, yeah, yeah. And, you know, slay <laughs> yeah. the evil Romans. Totally. And and we want that because we want that kind of victory. Yeah. And Jesus is so different, and God is so different in his path. And even Zechariah in this, as you read on in Zechariah, mm. it talks about how even this king will be rejected mm. and uh, and kind of laughed at a little bit and uh, pushed down and, and and mentions like a shepherd. They adds that shepherd piece into wow. there as you read right. on through yep. yeah. Yeah. through Zechariah. But <clears throat> but it God what what's great about Zechariah's prophecy is and, and the prophet is just a mouthpiece of God. Yeah. Um they God had selected them say speak for me and mm. they did. And yeah. if they were ever wrong they were Fun. annihilated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh they spoke for God and and God wanted his people to be encouraged 
that there is a king that's coming. Yeah. That there is hope, even though you're going through the the horribleness of trying to rebuild your life, of trying to deal with the, you know, the, the uh, huge issues coming out of uh, their time, you know, uh, being pushed down as a people. So you talk about ethnic strife and mm-hmm. and yeah. all that kind of thing that's happening. They, they push down, but God now, in His love and His grace, says, "There's hope. Mm. Hang on to hang on to this hope. Yeah. Hold on to this hope. Hold on to the reality that there is a King that's coming that's going to set things straight." Mm. And so when the people, after seeing Jesus do all these miracles, he had just raised Lazarus yeah, from the dead. Yeah. He's, I mean, this, and, and he a lot literally of stuff walked is happening. Yeah, yeah. And like, what's so going on? The, so he, and they are just pumped. Yeah. And so they're shouting out, Hosanna, which is save us, please save us now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they also quote another, uh, another Old Testament uh, writing. They uh, quote Psalm 118. Uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and and they're quoting that and just shouting out. And I love I love this one part in Luke, when Luke talks about this. Um, the the Pharisees are there and they're looking at Jesus and say, "Hey, make these people be quiet. Yeah, quiet this is just too much." And he and Jesus says, "If they be quiet, the very rocks will cry out." Yeah, and you're yeah. thinking, "Yeah, all of creation is looking at Jesus, saying, yeah. this is it.'" Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. I mean, there's huge excitement over that. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they were a little misguided in how it was going to come about, but they should have got the idea because he's on a donkey. Yeah. If they really had understood Zechariah's prophecy. Yeah. That the, and af- and the humbleness of that. All this would flow out. Yeah, yeah. That this is something. Well, and you see the brilliance of the the biblical authors, obviously inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? But um, that they didn't include verse ten, which verse ten has. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim, the war horses from Jerusalem, the battle bow will be broken. You have this very millennial, eternal yeah. picture of peace right. that we know we're not experiencing now, right? Yeah. And so, um, and that's that's next time, you know, yeah. right? That's not, yeah. and so they, they're they they're very purposeful in their citations yeah. of, of the Old Testament scriptures. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. triumphal entry, we, we call it Palm Sunday. It's been called yeah. Palm Sunday, um, I'm not sure who coined the term. That might be a good study, uh, but it, it was uh, palm branches were laid yeah. down, and the uh, the early church fathers, I believe, named it that. And that was the beginning of Holy Week, mm. Easter Week, that we calls it. And all through each of the Gospels, lay out a number of incidences and opportunities and teachings of Jesus this week. Yeah, I mean, there is enough content in there to preach years and years yeah, and years of just content unpack, yeah. about how. King Jesus wants us truly to live in his kingdom, but good stuff in this week. Well, yeah, and I mean, speaking of this week, you know, and as we're kind of <laughs> thinking sequentially, like, okay, you know, he came in, he uh, arrived, and, and okay, this is this is big, there's Old Testament impl- implications and prophetic stuff, but then the week is kind of up and down, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and a lot of stuff happens that is very humble. You know, I think of Monday, Thursday, or the Last Supper, right, where it's like, this is a very intimate kind of, it's it's not like, okay, this is a big meeting of how we're going to figure this out. It was a very intimate moment with his inner circle. Um, and then obviously the uh, tragic Good Friday, at least at the mm-hmm. time, how that must have been perceived. Um, and before we get to Easter, like, Let's unpack, you know, a little bit for our, our audiences. You know, we mentioned this week we have Monday, Thursday. We have a service coming up this Thursday, uh, you know, this week. It's going to be a fun food service, Passover. Pastor Mike, you're leading kind of a yeah. Seder, right? Like, Well, not – yeah, kind ish. of a <laughs> Christian version of a Seder. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. And just pulling out some of the elements that it seems would have been part of this that point to Jesus. And Jesus uniquely brings them out right in the middle of a Passover. And if – if you understand the the the, the um, order of things of a Passover meal, which a lot of it's laid out in Exodus, because uh, mm-hmm. yeah, when it God happened. said when yeah. it's it's to celebrate the angel of death passing over yeah. um, God's people and them being uh, led out to victory to be freedom from slavery, and um, so God instructed this Passover meal. Mm. And say, always remember, and there's a lot of elements from a spotless lamb to different herbs and things that they're to be able to remember. And <clears throat> the, um, I'm not sure who added some of these different things, but in ceremony, they added things like taking some bitter herbs to remember the bitterness, taking some sweet things to remember the sweetness of God's yeah. promises. And all of those things added in there. And so yeah. each element is just pregnant with meaning. Mm. And uh, we'll unpack some of those on Thursday night. Uh, but, you know, you mentioned that there were some important and intimate times. And actually that 
that last supper, that time in that upper room was a very close and personal time Jesus had mm. with his disciples. Yeah. Some intimate teaching that we get to look into when we read that. Yeah. The, 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 the one who captures the, the washing of the feet is the Gospel of John. And in John chapter 13, uh, it, it deals with coming into there and, and, and they're coming to this upper room and Jesus uh, strips down to his, his, just uh, his, his skivvies and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and puts a towel around him and begins to wash the disciples' feet, which is that alone is mm. an act here. Jesus, you know, who is the creator of all things. And, yeah. You know, uh, read Colossians 1 uh, and, and he breathed into existence all the days. He's all powerful, almighty you know, walks on water, heals the sick, causes the blind, blind to, to see and the mm. lame to walk. And he, he raised people from the dead. Here he is yeah. taking the form of the lowliest of servant yeah. and washing the disciples' of feet. I can imagine that. And Peter has an yeah. issue with it, but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> later he's okay. And and then he um, and instills some teaching. And so it's called Monday Thursday. Yeah. What is because that? Because the what Latin, is... uh, it comes from Latin, the word man, mandatum, which is the mandate, which is Jesus gave in John 13, which ah. said you love uh, love your brothers, love each of us, and yeah. you know, I give you a new commandment. I give to you to love one another as I have loved you. Is what yeah, Jesus yeah. says, which is a huge. <clears throat> I, I was just reading that the other day. I mean, that's like if we really consider that. Wow, like the same way that Jesus loved his disciples, and as we've been going through the Gospel of Mark, like to see in each instance through his whole ministry. Wow, he loved these guys in yeah. such powerful ways, but like almost pointed ways that, ooh, that might hurt at first, but then let me come alongside you. Mm -hmm. And now he's saying, hey, disciples, you know, like, you know, the last three years or, you know, however long we've been doing this, how closely we were together and how much I loved you. Now you go and do this for each yeah. other. Yeah. And that's, if we really think about it, that's powerful. I mean, that's, Absolutely. yeah. yeah. And, then, and then the intimacy of the, the vulnerability of Jesus yeah. as they go into the garden yeah. and he... You know, falls on his face before God and says, "If there's any way to take this cup from me," and he has the disciples stay at a distance to watch and to pray, mm -hmm. they fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I probably would have fallen asleep too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you I'm know, being Jesus, honest, you know, your Jesus is having an intimate, in, yeah. you know, in, 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 in a time with God, but also wants his his brothers. Yeah, I need your support now. Yeah, and, and they kind of go, "Am hey, we're falling asleep?" Yeah, <laughs> we just ate a bunch of hummus or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna, you know, <laughs> we're tired. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, one of the things I love about this week is um, it's a, like I'm still sweaty from setting up chairs. Like we came from setting up chairs to, <laughs> yeah, to this to podcast. This podcast. Um, but it's it's a massive amount of work and a lot of meetings um, in preparation. But it's it's just my favorite week of the year, and some of that is because I, I was reading a book recently that encapsulated it. But the idea of there's there's Chronos time, which is chronological time, and then there's what's Kairos time, which is kind of God's eternal time and and the times where he steps into time and our time and space. And then what, the way we do Holy Week, Passion Week, Easter Week, whatever you want to call it, is a way where those intersect. Hmm. Like if you're a person who reads the end of the book first, then you may or may not, it may or may not be speaking your language. But <laughs> what this week does and the way we do it, the way I, reason I love how we do it um, is because it gives us that chance to – move out of our regular order of life and step into the week and relive it and, you know, to sit around the table on Monday, Thursday and to laugh, to mm. reconnect with maybe people we haven't seen for a while, yeah. and then to remember God's faithfulness through the Exodus yeah. and to remember, to see how Jesus reshapes that mm. um, and then go home. And then come back the next day and grieve mm. at the cross and feel the weight and the sorrow of that. And then all of that just kind of builds the rhythm. And then there's nothing better than Easter Sunday, you know, and so, and the joy that comes with that. So I don't know that's, that's one of the things I, I love about this whole week that it just gives you a chance to, as best we can, 2000 later, years yeah. later, yeah. to step back into it and relive it in some small way. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and, so. and tradition, ceremony, uh, anniversaries, they're yeah. all important. They're important yeah. for us as human beings. Yeah. You know, a, a wedding anniversary to remember that day and, yeah. you know, and the, and the fun and with family and yeah. friends and, and, and birthdays to yeah. celebrate and uh, memorial times <clears throat> to never forget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God was the one who set up Passover and, mm -hmm. and the church – the the early church picked up on those and 
yeah. created some things. And actually, we celebrate church on a Sunday. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can celebrate church any day, but traditionally it started on Sunday because that's the day that Jesus rose. Yeah. So each Sunday is a memorial or mm. a remembrance that we serve a risen Savior. Yeah, of his work of resurrection. <clears throat> yeah. But it's, it, it is important to walk through those. And I, you know, it's, it's, we're, we're in a culture right now where we're in transition because we're frustrated with Zoom everything and mm. not personal interaction. And, and we're trying to pull back into that. But there's mm. something in the chemistry of being in a room together with other people yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. And I know for some it's scary and I still get that. And hopefully God is working with your fears and those. But but there is something important about gathering mm-hmm. yeah. in the same space. Yeah. And uh and that's why you know we've we're not we're not showing online the Thursday and the Friday mm-hmm. yeah. gatherings. It's it's a in person Yeah. It's meant and to uh, be. and so if you're listening and you'd like to come, we really would love for you to be there. Yeah, it might be a great opportunity. Even if, I know it's a little nerving, nerve wracking, but God will be with you, and I think you'll be blessed because of it. And then just yeah. to let people know, April four uh, today. Uh, so uh, that we're recording this podcast on the twelfth of April. Um, so <laughs> Thursday the fourteenth and Friday the fifteenth are our Monday Thursday and Good Friday services, yeah. both at six thirty. We'd love to have you guys yeah. here. Thursday is just at Cypress. Yes, mm-hmm. and then Friday is both campuses yeah. have their own services. Yeah, and our Spanish also congregation has the same. Yeah, as separate yeah. service at same time. They are at um, seven on um, Good Friday. Friday. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, so if that's if that's possiblemente para ti, then go to that. <laughs> I got to brush up on my Spanish, yeah. guys. I got <laughs> Pastor Manuel. I got need to get Pastor Manuel. Yeah, we do. On yeah, absolutely, yes, we do. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And Pastor May too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our combined ministry. Um, well, guys, as we we wrap up our, our podcast episode here, just uh, let's cap off Easter Sunday. Yeah. I mean, that's hey, that's like you said, Justin. That's the celebration. Celebration, Mike. You said mm-hmm. that's literally the reason why we have church on Sundays is we are celebrating the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And Paul talks to that. I mean, it's it's all over. Like, yeah. if not for the resurrection, if right. not, yeah. th- then Jesus would just be another historical character, right. a messianic figure. I've spoken about this the last handful of weeks. You know, there was a lot of messianic people at this time, interestingly enough, concentrated in these couple hundred years, uh, and Jesus would just get lost in the mix Mm -hmm. if this wasn't the case. But for so many reasons, for so much evidence for back then and evidence throughout the ages, Mm -hmm. we believe this to be a verifiable fact. Well, if it's not, then as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, then our faith is... It's worthless. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's it's a really important day. Oh man, yeah. You know, if there's no Easter, there's no Christian faith. So it's, yeah, it's, it's that it's that important. Yeah. And you know, many have tried to refute it, and they just can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, cause, and you know, you think about it. One of the things I like to think about and and talk about about the the, the proof of the resurrection. All anybody had to do then was to produce the body of Jesus, mm-hmm. yeah. lay it out before everybody, put it back up on the cross. Yeah. And the End of story. Totally, yeah. But they couldn't because there was no body yeah, in the yeah. tomb. Totally. And Jesus is out walking around very much alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like he's actually- I mean, hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of people saw him. Yeah. 500 at one time. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, um, and you know, that, and you'll hear on Sunday as you come, the great blessing and benefit of what that, what, he, what Christ's victory Mm. means for us mm-hmm. yeah because it is an incredible victory that we need to be reminded of over and over and over and over and over again because it's so easy to get caught by the intensity of the world and forget that yeah. we serve a risen savior if jesus can be raised from the dead nothing is impossible yeah and actually that's what romans you know if god if, if the whole world begins if we got but god is for us you know we can stand it yeah. we can make it yeah yeah yeah, I think we're in a time desperately in need of hope. Mm-hmm. And even as, you know, people maybe struggle with, you know, whether they even can believe the Christian story and Jesus's resurrection, I think a lot of that comes from what we're willing to believe in our pre- preconceptions, our, our previous uh, cognitive mental commitments. And I think one of those is just to realize the hope that Jesus offers is at least worth giving it a hearing, mm. at least yeah, worth giving yeah. it a fair shot. And, yeah. and what we're going to cover on Sunday um, is like the culmination of 
of, and I probably say this every few months, so I'm not sure how much credibility I have, but <laughs> it might be the greatest chapter in the Bible, Romans eight. Oh yeah. And, and so, um, and it's the it's the culmination of that. Like it's uh, you know like seven or eight verses that just uh, explodes with the, God's goodness that has been built yeah. in in like I said the greatest chapter of one of the greatest books. Uh, and and, and hinging Bible. on the reality that Christ has raised yep. from the dead. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Maybe for a, an upcoming podcast, we'll have uh, uh, we'll we'll have arm wrestling over our favorite because I'm a fan of Revelation 21, but that's yeah, why, see, but, but but for a different yeah. reason. But yeah, well, that Roman was mine favorite. when I was teaching through Revelation. But oh, you know, okay. well, you that's, that's what I mean. It's like you know, yeah. I kind of like oh, I think this might be my favorite because it's. But that's yeah, right. yeah. Romans eight. We got to we got to pack that. Unpack it's definitely up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. How do you say favorite from the smorgasbord? Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Totally, yeah. Yes, I mean, oh, that's my favorite. Okay, that's my favorite. That's it's all favorite. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. Honest, oh, yeah, but man. you know, the I would encourage you as listeners yeah. to <clears throat> take a moment and try to you know pull towards the end of each of the gospels mm. and you know flip back, find the resurrection story in each one, and you will be blessed. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, you know, to me, one of my favorites I'll talk about a little bit on Sunday is Luke twenty four. So it's it's uh, that chapter has got a number of different stories in there mm. that you would just yeah of all these. I mean, instances. how you will be in empowered, emboldened, excited. Yeah. Uh, that we serve as a savior. Well, thank you guys. Really appreciate you being here. And for those listening, um, just to kind of jump back, we were talking about uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 13 and 14. Um, uh, you know, Jesus calls us to love one another. Right. And um, like Mike mentioned earlier, we want to invite you guys to join us on Monday, Thursday for a meal together on Good Friday to just um, kind of feel the heaviness of that moment together. But also, like Justin said, we're, we're in a, a dark time. You know, there's these things going on in Ukraine. There are things very, there have been wars and famine going on in, in Middle East and Africa for the past couple hundred years, you know, that that's very much like what's happening in the Ukraine right now, but it's just not as publicized. There's always reason to be sorrowful. But as in those Gospels of John chapters 13 and 14, we here at Neighborhood Church, we love you guys. Mm. Those of you listening to this podcast, you know, I'm, some of you guys we know, some of you guys we don't even know, you know, like I, I know I'm fairly new here at the church as well, but it's like, this is why why we do what we do, because God so loved us and he desires that we love each other. So we love you guys. We hope to see you this week. Um, and if anything, at Easter Sunday, because that, again, that's, that's the celebration happens there. So... Yeah, just wanted to tell you guys, thank you for listening today to our podcast. Please uh, check us out on YouTube. You can find us by searching Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos on YouTube, and you can find our resources there. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. Also, check out our website, neighborhoodchurch.com, and you can go directly here to the Revive podcast, and kind of we curate different content. Pastor Mike has a blog. We link to that. Um, We're probably going to link to uh, probably like... Uh, Lee Strobel, Case for Christ, books, uh, you know, if you need some more resources, maybe a study guide on Zachariah. <laughs> I will Justin. give you a, a video on Zachariah you love. Oh, that's perfect. Like a few minutes. Yeah, that'll be excellent. So those resources are on our website at neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. You can go there to find those resources. And as always, we love to hear from you guys. You can email us at connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. Again, connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. And until next time, we'll be praying for you guys and we hope that God revives your soul.